All right, now that I've finished the Jurassic World stuff, I wonder what I'm going to review next. What the? Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover Warren Twenty here, and I'm here with a brand new movie review. And this movie review is going to be for the start of a new franchise that I'll be reviewing next. Now that I finished all the Jurassic World stuff and or Jurassic Park films, time to move on to the next franchise because we have another film in this franchise that's also coming out this summer in July, and that's of course none other than a certain. This one is going to be for an animated one, one that started in 2010. And I, I think you can tell just by, I don't need to really say much because of the intro you just saw there in this video and um, background. I think you need to tell what it is. Yeah, it's the Despicable Me, Despicable Me franchise, or aka the, what people seem to now call the Minions franchise. Because of a certain hated spinoff that I also will be reviewing this in June, that I'm not excited to do. But, yeah, so, anyway, this was pretty much the kickstart to the animation company known as Illumination, an animation studio that pretty much dominated the 2010s with most of their stuff. While not too well received by critics, they were often box office hits and made a lot of money, so let's say, that's why I say they dominated the 2010s in animation studios, as they've seen... As besides Disney, they seem to have made the most money. They were pretty much the amount of money once DreamWorks used to make. But anyway, what's the plot of this film? Well, the film tells the story of a supervillain named Gru who adopts a trio of orphan girls named Margo, Edith, and Agnes, and also attempts to steal a shrink fray from his rival Vector in order to shrink and steal the moon and become the best villain of all time. As technically speaking, He's kind of a bit of a failure when it comes to villainous schemes. Sir, sure, he has like he had like maybe one success with with this screen from Times Square, but other than that, most of his crimes usually are just stealing things from Las Vegas. So this crime will make him the greatest villain in history. So how is this film made? Well, Despicable Me was initially developed by Sergio Pablo, so it's in the working title, Evil Me. He later participated in development during the early stages of the production and took the package unsolicited to Universal Pictures, where he became the first of several screenwriters on the project as well as executive producer. Producer Chris Melodandre, now the owner of Illumination, left 20th Century Fox Animation as president in early 2007 to establish his own animation studio under Universal Pictures, which he of course named which is now known as Illumination Entertainment, or now just simply Illumination. After buying the pitch from Pablo's Mel Dondre brought in screamers Kinko Paul and Ken Dorio, who he had worked on on the, on the 2008 Dr. Seuss adaptation or Ears of Ooh, while at, when he was at Fox to write the project. Soon after, he bought together animators Pierre Coffin and Chris Renaud to direct with the Paris based studio McGuff to handle animation. Coff Coffin, who comes from McGuff, was recruited was recruited to for his experience directing commercials for the studio, while Renaud was bought in for his animation experience in Blue Sky Studios, which was now shut down. In November 2008, Illumination Entertainment announced the beginning of the development on its first CGI animated film and project, Despicable Me. And so, yeah, the film was, like, made, marketed, you all know the jazz, how it usually goes. Despicable Me debuted at the Moscow International Film Festival on June 19, 2010, and was then released in the United States in theaters on July 9, 2010. 
The film received positive reviews and earned $543 million worldwide, becoming the ninth highest grossing film of 2010. It was nominated for Best Animated Feature Film at the Golden Globe Awards, BAFTA Awards, and Annie Awards. It's also the first entry of what would become one of the most notorious franchises in animation. Now, when it comes to my reaction to the film, I remember um, I remember seeing this in theaters in 3D opening night back when I was in like uh, middle school, and I have to say this is this is this one's my favorite film of the franchise and my second favorite Illumination film. This one actually, of a, compared to most of the stuff Illumination did after this, well, with the exception of one feature that I reviewed weeks ago. This one feels, or two features anyways, not in this franchise. This one feels it like it has the most heart put into it compared to the rest of the series. Now, the second one actually was also pretty good, even if it didn't come close to this one. While the spinoff in 2015, yeah, that one really sucked balls. And the third one was mediocre. but And not really needed. But back to the review for the first installment. Despicable Me's teasers and trailers back then seemed to represent a few different movies, and that's reflected by the general segregation of comedy styles that the film begins with. Like, if the film starts, Gru kind of handles the dark comedy, the trio of orphans gets the cutesy comedy, and, of course, these guys, I don't need to say their names, you already know their names at this rate, handle the slapstick. As the film progresses, though, these lines begin to blur, building to a strong emotional finale and a satisfying complete tale. Like, this is, this is pretty much one of those rare Pixar anime films at a time that doesn't seem destined for, well, at the time this didn't seem like it was destined for sequel Dawn, but they got lucky with one sequel. The tale, however, when it comes to the concept, the tale of rival villains is not terribly original, nor is the idea of a villain having his heart melted by adorable children. But the way Despicable Me blends those two ideas or cliches is just fantastic. There's humor, action, and heart, but more could you want from an animated film in order for it to work? As for supplies by the quality of this film, like as usual, the animation was stunning, but I but I digress. Like what kids flick isn't on par with the animation on these kind of days. Like aside from maybe the few nobodies that no one really cares for, like the emotion in the film is definitely the strongest suit. For you'll probably find yourself very touched by these characters by the end of the movie. This makes up for the rather simple story, actually, one you probably have seen in some cartoon show somewhere. Or just done to death. And, um, there are also quite a few juvenile jokes in this movie, specifically with bodily functions, like, like, specifically a reference to a dart gun, also become an iconic, the certain gun that's also become an iconic thing in this franchise, and, and there's some kind of references to motives, like, from James Bond movies, like Goldfinger and Moonraker. And, um, it's also, um, it's also this one uh, little reference to um, Ass, where in order to dump the orphanage owner to let him adopt the three girls for his plan, Gru uses words differing with false sentiment, then, then pretty much butters up by telling her that she is a face common on Moro. And um, for those of you who obviously don't know Spanish, or do or do not know Spanish, I should say, it's basically, he said, like, she has the face of an ass, as in donkey. In kind of a way. But since, since the orphanage owner apparently just doesn't, seems like she does not know the Spanish language, it's kind of taken in. Well, eventually she does pick up a Spanish book and discovers what he really meant. And I think we all know what those characters are. Well, what the infamous comic relief characters are. There are the yellow skinned little jelly beans that we all call today the minions. As many know now, the Minions are the mascots of Illumination and the famed Despicable Me franchise. With their innocent yet reckless nature and garbled language, the Minions are the ones that will have that pretty much had audiences rolling over the floors at the time this came out. Well, um, they were destined to be, but then, of course, as soon as their spin-off came out, they've kind of become hated. Nowadays. Well, they aren't... But thankfully, like... This is the only one where they're not really the main focus of the film. I mean, the main voice actors do a great job as well as filling their stories, and um, such as Steve Carell's Gru was a perfect casting choice, and Gru's assistant, Dr. Nefario, who I'll get to kind of in a bit, 
Voice by Russell Brown is also great. She means, although Dr. Inferno kind of has a bit of bad qualities I'm going to get to soon. And, and now while the story I means, once again, story is kind of cliche. Sure, you'll know he'll grow to love the girls, but but Corel does a wonderful job of showing the bond through deception, through deception like, like he needs them to penetrate this adversary, like, like penetrate like vectors, his rival vectors, not so secret layout for devices shrink the moon and um, I will admit, I also, now, while Vector's kind of more comedic, um, he's an alright villain. To be honest, like, we also have this other character named Mr. Perkins who Will Arnett voices him. I kind of wished he were the villain in this movie, to be honest. He was kind of a little more, I found him kind of a bit more of an interesting character than Vector really was. I kind of, maybe, I kind of would have maybe liked it better if maybe Mr. Perkins were the bad guy of the movie and kind of would have made, maybe it kind of would have made a little more sense and... Heck, they should have bought him back. They should have bought him back for the third one. Made him the bad guy of the third movie. Then I probably would have accepted the third movie a little more. But speaking of this part, guys, we're now pretty much getting onto the bad qualities of the movie. The bad qualities, um, the reason why I'm not going to put this a 10 out of 10, because we have the bad qualities, we have to be that the scatological humor is really annoying at times, and... There's even some pretty unlikable characters, like the orphanage owner and the carnival baker. Well, the carnival baker, thankfully, is only in one scene. And while Dr. Nefario is a pretty funny character, he even gets a bit rude in the later half of the film when he has them when he has the girl sent back to the orphanage. Yeah, sorry about that, guys, but and now the biggest one of all. Who I'm pointing to. While they they worked fine in this movie, and I, they worked a little bit in the second one, by the time the franchise progresses, they get really annoying. Specifically in their spinoff. Well, but once again, they're tolerable here and in the second compared to every other entry in this franchise. So yeah. That's probably that they're probably this movie's biggest baddest quality, and Illumination's big bad quality. But despite that, Despicable Me is a perfect start to an animation studio that would soon be coming close to reaching Disney level success with box office numbers, and become a big name in the animation industry due to it. Anyway, that's it for my review of Despicable Me, the first one. If you're wondering how I'm gonna rank the first one, here's how I am going to rank it. So overall, if you want to see one of the studio's better films and how they all started and became a big name in the animation industry or have kids of your own, then give this movie a watch and buy an add it to your collection for sure. And if you're wondering how I'm going to rank Despicable Me, I'm going to give Despicable Me a 9 out of 10. There we go. That's pretty much my review for the first film of this franchise. Now you all know I have to review the second one next week. It's going to be next week's review. As this is the next franchise I am doing, now that I finished Jurassic Park. But yeah, so until then, guys, that will be it for this review. Thank you all for watching. And if you like this and want to see more, then don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.